you know, I want him to correct something that uh, I think he misused Bronco and Bentley yesterday. So, OJ, you want to? Uh, I may have inadvertently, as we were going through the B's and B's, Bronco and Bentley, at once or twice, possibly, I don't recall, but my lawyers tell me that maybe once or twice I may have said bron Bronco when I meant Bentley and Bentley when I meant Bronco. Can you remember when that occurred? No, I can't. What did your lawyers uh, tell you about uh, when you may have misused Bronco and Bentley? Well, he's not going to tell you what we told him, Mr. Uh, well, based on what they said to you, can you tell us <clears throat> where you think you may have misused Bronco and Bentley without I, going into your conversation with them? Well, that's the same thing. That's uh, by another means trying to break into the attorney-client privilege, and I'm not going to allow them to well, do that. But, but you can ask him uh, where is he? Since you've opened it up, I'm, I need to follow up on this to make sure we have a complete understanding of uh, your testimony, and I don't want to have to go well, through. I'll tell you where I thought he misspoke. I went through. And that was where he was talking about the cell phone conversation with Barbieri, and he said Bentley once and Franco once and, and okay. Bentley another time. As I understood your testimony yesterday, you uh, made a cell phone call to Paula Barbieri when you got out of the garage at or near the location of the Bentley. And when you completed that call, you either put the cell phone in your pocket or near the trunk of the Bentley. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Do you have a, um, a clearer understanding as to what you did with that cell phone when you completed uh, well the call? Obviously, I took it with me, so since I was swinging the club, I assume it was in my pocket. <clears throat> uh, did you do any uh, preparation for today's session, Mr. Simpson? Absolutely none. Read anything? Absolutely nothing. Did you watch television and pick up any pointers? <laughs> you don't have to answer that. It's a good question, but he's not going to answer okay. it. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the um, alarm system at your house in June of 1994. Mm -hmm. uh, could you um, tell us whether you had an alarm system? Yes. And did the alarm system uh, work with respect to the Ashford and Rockingham gates? No. It worked with respect to the exterior doors of the residence, correct? Yes. It was a West Tech system? Yes. <coughs> Uh, is this a system where you could activate or deactivate the alarm through uh, a remote location or device such as a telephone? No. The only, what, were, what were the ways in which you could activate the alarm at the house in June of 1994? Um, there's a pad in my bedroom, there's a pad in my upstairs hall. There's a pad inside and outside the front door. There's a pad inside and outside the laundry door. Inside and outside laundry door? Yeah. It's a great dot. It is, it is. <coughs> is the outside of the laundry door uh, the exterior of the property? No, it's in the garage. Okay, so when you uh, go into the garage from, from the uh, driveway, if you were to enter the garage and mm -hmm. then go out the, the door that leads into the residence, you go right into the laundry room? Yes. And in the garage on the outside of that laundry room door is a pad? That's correct. And on the inside is a pad? That's correct. Now when you enter the um, uh, residence, are you re in the alarm, and let's assume the alarm is on, uh, are you required to uh, deactivate the alarm from the outside pad? Yes. Um, and if you deactivate the alarm from the outside pad and then you open the door and enter, is the alarm off now? Yes. Okay. If you were not to, to deactivate the alarm from the outside pad but enter the residence anyway, uh, could you then deactivate it from an inside pad? Yes. And is there a delay? of a certain interval of time before uh, the alarm will start ringing? I don't believe so. So if you fail to punch in the code on the pad and you open the door, what happens? The alarm goes off. And what does that mean? Bells ring? 
whistle alarm, sound. An alarm goes off. And does it uh, ring over to the West Tech security place as well? Yes. In the police department? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, who, by the way, the way you just described the system, that's how it uh, functioned in June of 1994, correct? Mm, yes. It hasn't changed, has it? That's, yeah, yes. Correct? Correct. Um, did you have the code in uh, June of 1994? Yes. Or was it like a four-digit code? Yes. Okay. And who else had that code, to your knowledge? Mm, my family. My immediate family, you, Arnell and Jason, my housekeeper. Names. Mm, well, I did, I'm Gigi, Michelle possibly, Nicole, AC, um, and I don't know after that. Were there uh, doors that one could, um, let's assume the alarm was on. Mm -hmm. Were there doors that people could uh, go in and out of the house through that would not activate the alarm? Mm, yes. Okay. Which doors were those? The ones that came from the guest house into the house. And I don't know, I have some window doors. I don't know if, they're, if they were on the alarm at the time. And I don't think any of the windows were on the alarm at that time. Do, do, how many guest houses were on the property? One? Three. Three. Now, does each of those guest houses have a uh, door that goes into the main residence? No, just one. One. And who was in that guest house at the time? Cato. Cato. Did Cato also have a door that went out to the exterior of the property? Yes. Okay. And was that dorm on the alarm? Mm, to the exterior of the property, no. Okay. So Cato could all come um, into his guest house by getting into this uh, exterior door that went directly into his guest house. Even if the alarm was on, it would not go off, correct? It depends. It was an alarm there, too. I missed that one. It's, it, it depends if it was engaged or not. Oh, Cato's but, exterior door had an alarm on it? Yeah. Okay. Was there a keypad in and outside of his door? Mm, yeah. Okay. No, just in, outside of his door. So when Cato, uh, if the alarm were on and Cato were coming home, Let's mm -hmm. say you were out of town, uh, he would have to punch the code in order to get in, right? Mm, well, he didn't know the code, but if he had known the code, uh, he would have had to do that. Is this the same, uh, is it on the same code as the rest of the house? Yes. Uh, so when you were out of town and Kalen was staying there, the alarm was never on? He didn't have access to my house. I don't know if the alarm was on because the housekeeper was there. but. He didn't have unlimited access into my home. So he would go into the guest house, right? Yes. And his normal routine was to enter through this exterior door? Yes. And was he, based on your ground rules with him, was he permitted to go into the interior of the house from his guest house? Mm, unless somebody invited him in. Uh, what if no one invited him? He wasn't supposed to go in. And the door was always locked. There's two doors, actually, and both of them were always locked. He, did he have the key to unlock those doors? No. Now, you said yesterday there was a single key to key to all the doors on the property. No, I had a single key to all the doors on the property. But that key also worked on Kalen's lock, too. Yes. And he had a key, right? Yes. So he could have used that key to, to access any lock on the property, right? That's incorrect. Why is that incorrect? Because he couldn't. Was it a, is it because he didn't have permission? No. I'm, I'm confused. I'm not understanding your testimony. If his lock was keyed the same as all the other locks and he had a key. I didn't say that. You okay. said that. So his lock was keyed differently. Is that what you're saying? Yes. The exterior door. Yes. And the interior doors he did not have the key to, right? Correct. And he couldn't open those doors from the inside of his room to get into the residence. Is that right? Correct. They could be locked on the, on the other side of the door, right? Correct. Okay. So, um, is his door, the, his exterior door, the only door that was keyed differently from the rest of the property? No. What other doors? Most of them. Most of the other doors? Yeah, in my house. Were keyed differently? Yeah, different keys for different things. Okay, then I must have misunderstood your testimony yesterday because I thought you told me that there was a single God, he's got key. a master key. Come on, let's get it. Is that what it is, a master key? That's correct. Okay, well... See, I don't have a master key, but that's a good idea, Mr. Baker. I have like seven keys from my house. So you have a master key, and everyone, and there are a bunch of different keys. Yes. Okay, and who has the master key? Me and the housekeeper. And Arnell? No. 
Did Nicole have one? She wasn't supposed to have one. Okay. Uh, so, bottom line here is Kalen could only get into his room and no other room. Correct. Okay. Now, if, um, let, me, let me go back again. If the alarm was on in the rest of the house, um, unbeknownst to Kalen, and Kalen entered the, his room through the key, through the exterior door, uh, would the alarm go off? If the alarm was on, yes. Okay. Was it your practice when you were out of town to have the alarm set? When I, it was my practice when I was out of town to have someone at my house. Um, if you were to, uh, your housekeeper, did she work weekends? No, not generally. So if you were going to be out of town on weekends, would the alarm be set? Should be, yes. And how would Kate Kalen deal with the setting of the alarm if he's going in and out of the house on weekends? As I told you before, he wasn't supposed to be going in and out of the house on weekends. Well, what if he went in and out of his guest room and the alarm were, were activated on the property would, um, and nobody else was home, like your housekeeper, would uh, the alarm be going on and off when Kalen's entering his guest room? No. And why is that? Because, I, as I told you, his exterior door to his guest room is not on the alarm. Okay, just the interior door? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Now, you didn't have anybody at home, uh, excuse me, there were no housekeepers uh, on duty on Saturday and Sunday, June 11 and June 12, correct? Correct. And the housekeeper was coming the next morning on Monday? I would assume so, yes. Okay. And, did she, and she had the code, right? Yes. Okay. Whenever you leave town and the housekeeper isn't home, do you, um, and no one else is home, do you always set the alarm? Some, uh, well, I try to. If I'm thinking about it, I definitely do, yes. And you you set the alarm after you close the front door? From not the outdoor always. Key not always. Sometimes as I'm going out the front door. Can you set the alarm from the inside of the house and, and then go to the front door, open it, and leave without the alarm going off? Correct. Is there yes. a delay from the moment you set it until it becomes activated? Yes, there is. How, how long is that delay? I don't know. <clears throat> Did you set the alarm um, on the evening of June 12th before you went into the limousine? No. Why not? Because Cato was looking for a flashlight, or I thought he would continue to look for a flashlight. And you, you left him in the residence, in other words? Well, he was at the front door. When I walked out, he was behind me, and I got in the limo, and I said, well, look and see if you can find a flashlight. Now, your understanding was that uh, Kalen would, when he was finished, close the front door and go yeah. back to his room, right? Yes. yes. Through the outside of the property, right? Well, yes. Or through the inside. Of, well, yes, through the outside, because he couldn't lock the back door, yes. And um, did um, you ask Kalen to set the alarm for you? No. I think I told him I would call and give him the code. At one point, we were talking about the code, but I had to leave, and I called him and gave him the code. And from where did you call him? I think the airport. From a pay phone? Yes. Uh, at the gate? Yes. At American Airlines? Yes. What gate number, do you remember? No. Is that the first time you had ever given Cato Kalin uh, the code to your um, alarm? I believe so, yes. Is that the first time Cato Kalin, you had asked Cato Kalin to set the alarm for you? Yes. Uh, did Cato say to you that he would do as you requested? Yes. And do you know whether he did? No. Did he uh, tell you that he wasn't comfortable receiving the code or, or doing the alarm? No. Uh, did he tell you that he didn't have confidence that he could properly uh, activate the alarm? No. Did you explain to him how to do it? Yes. What it involves, punching in some numbers? Yes. And that's all, right? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> if the alarm is on and you're inside the home, uh, does the alarm go off? There's any motion detector? There is one, yes. Where is that located? I would prefer not to say. Was it, uh, where was it located in June of 1994? I would prefer not to say. Could you please tell us? No. I'll give you that information and he can write it on a piece of paper. Is that fair enough for you? For now, yes. Just write down a little
just so I'm clear, you have only one location in the whole residence uh, that That's is correct. subject to a motion detector, and uh, when you activate the alarm, the motion detector goes on, right? Pardon me? When you, act, when you set the alarm, that also activates the motion detector, correct? No. You have to also set the motion detector? Yes. And how does, uh, can you do that from any of the keypads? No. Uh, how do you set the um, motion detector? Uh, by a pad that's upstairs in my upstairs hall. You you did give me a description of that pad before um, when you said you had one in your bedroom and one upstairs. Is that the yeah. upstairs one? Yes. Is it a second pad uh, next to the, um, the the other pad for the doors? Yes. Okay. And that's the only pad that activates a motion detector, right? Mm, yes. Okay. Do you know how large of an area that motion detector covers? A uh, relatively large area, yes. Would it cover the kit? Well, would it cover the kitchen? Well, I'm not going to talk about that. I've already had to spend a fortune changing my alarms, but talking about my alarm system in court. Have you changed it since the yes. court case? Yes. Made it better. Well, I'm only interested in what it was at the time. Well, some things are in the same place. Did you have Mr. Kalin um, with, withdrawn? Did you activate the motion detector before you left the premises? No. Did you ask Mr. Kalin to do so? No. You only told him to do the, the sure. doors, correct? Yes. Now, why on this one occasion for the first time ever did you ask Cato Kalin to activate the alarm? Because on this one occasion for the first time ever, Cato was, as far as I know, present when I was leaving and concerned about something around the house. Since he was there, I told him to look for a flashlight, investigate whatever he was investigating, and put my alarm on. What, were you concerned about what Cato Kalin was describing to you? Not really, but he seemed to be concerned. You were not concerned? Not really, but he why, seemed to be concerned. Why were you not concerned? Because I had to go. I was concerned about making my flight. He told you that there were some noises and maybe he felt an earthquake, right? Yes. And he wanted a flashlight to go investigate who, who might be in, in the property, correct? Correct. Right. And you were not concerned that there might be somebody there? Well, my alarm goes off many times. Uh, I am a person who get up in the middle of the night every night and walk around my house. I hear noises all the time. If he was concerned, he could look and put on my alarm when he left. You, um... Did he describe the noises to you? As I told you before, no. Well, when you, f you saw Kalen for the first time, when you came downstairs after you completed getting dressed, brought your Louis Vuitton bag, and went out to the front entryway. Wait a minute. That's We've incorrect. been through that sequence about 10 times. In I'm not going to go through that sequence. I'm trying to establish his conversations with Kalen, and well, I did not. Ask him. Well, I want to make sure, though, in point of time, that we're talking about the same time. <coughs> okay. Is that correct that you first uh, spoke to Kalen at that point in time? No, that's not correct. When did you first speak to Kalen? I believe it's at two two o'clock that day. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm only talking about the evening of June twelfth. After they get back from McDonald's. Exactly. Okay. Now, my question is, after you got back uh, from McDonald's. Uh, you saw Kalen for the first time when you came down finally from your bedroom with your bags packed, dropped him in the entryway. Then you saw Kalen, correct? I saw him, yes. Like an hour or so, I saw him when we had come back from McDonald's. And then the next time I saw him, I, I was about to leave, about an hour later or so. Okay, I didn't understand what you just said. An hour or so after you came back from McDonald's, you saw him again. Yeah, whatever, yeah, when I was about to leave. The time that I just described to you is about an hour or so after you came back from McDonald's. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, roughly, yes. And so you left around 11 o'clock, so you're saying you came back from McDonald's around 10 o'clock. I didn't say anything. We got back from McDonald's at whatever time we got back from McDonald's, and an hour or so after that, I was leaving, and I saw Cato. But you were leaving around 11 o'clock p.m., correct? Correct. So you came back from McDonald's around 10 o'clock p.m., correct? Maybe a little earlier than 10 o'clock p.m. 
I wasn't early. keeping time at the time. I was not paying attention to the time at the time to that extent. All I know is I told Cato I'd be leaving and the limo would be here in about an hour. I do recall us having that conversation when we got back from McDonald's. So an hour or so after, Cato was there, and I saw him when I was trying to leave. And the, I'm trying to fix precisely the point in time that you saw him an hour or so after you came back from McDonald's. And okay. my question I thought to we is, fixed that yesterday. Just, my, my question to you is you, you saw him for the first time an hour or so after McDonald's when you came down ready to leave. Correct. Now, you were in the entryway, and where was Kaylin? We have been through this. I we have, have, not, yes, I you have, have not. You, you went Mr. through it yesterday. Mr. Baker, yes, I have you not. Did. And you talked okay. about it, and he tells you he was over in the garage, and you, you went through it in excruciating detail. No, I did not. Yes, you did, and you're, we're not going to go through it again. I'm going to have to ask him some questions about his conversations with Kalen. You have asked him about every conversation he had with Kalen after or when he came down out of, the, uh, out of his house. That night. We're not going to go through that again. You know, it's just going to prolong this, that's all. Well, I, you're not going to uh, try to trip him up on... on by asking him the same question 15 times. That's not appropriate uh, conduct at this deposition. I'm trying to get the truth. I'm not trying to trip him up. If he's telling the truth, he won't be tripped up. Well, I don't need a lecture from you well, about but what you the know, truth you're, is you're about anything I don't need else. to listen to pejorative well, descriptions well, let's, of what I'm let's doing. Pull it up. Let's see what I'm not interested in pulling it up. Well, I, I don't care what you're interested okay. in. Pull it up. He's not going to answer well, another question well, until we pull it you up. You can pull it up. I'm going to attach the next exhibit in order, OK? Pull it up. Let's see what he asks about yesterday. And I intend to pursue conversations yeah. with Kaylin right now. Can you attach this as Exhibit 27? And this is Exhibit 28. Okay? Do whatever you want. I'm sorry. That yeah, that's 27. Here, Mr. Baker. This is Exhibit 28. I'm sorry, 28? Yeah, 27 and 28. This, um, the smaller one is 28. Okay. You got, what's the time on that? Page 268. <clears throat> Um, you have before you Exhibit um, 27, Mr. Simpson, Correct. and Exhibit 28. You can look at them together. Um, and you, these are sketches of the Rockingham property. Do you see that? Correct. Okay. Uh, when you came uh, downstairs for the last time to leave, uh, and you saw Kalen for the first time, I want you to point out on either one of these, whichever one you think is better, where Kalen was and where you were. Mm, I was uh, here outside of what you call an entry, I call a foyer, but this area here, which I would call entry, and he was somewhere in this area here. Okay, I'm going to put uh, uh, an OJS where mm -hmm. you are, correct? Mm -hmm. And Cato Kalin was where? Somewhere over here. He was moving around, but somewhere over there. Right around there? Yeah, in that area. Okay. I'll put a K there. Okay. And that's when he, he was front of the he was on the front of the limo, which was straddling this. Okay. I tell he was you, the front portion of the limo, but he was moving around. Where was the limo? Straddling right where it says there. Uh, yeah. Right here? Yeah. Okay. And where, uh, were there any other cars parked there? Yeah, my Bentley. It's right in this little yeah. area here? Yeah. Okay, I'll put uh, Bentley. See that? Mm -hmm. And um, can you spot the Bronco for us? Mm, it would be out here. Right here? Just yeah. uh, north of the uh, yeah, gate? Yeah, north of the gate at some point, yeah. Okay, were there any other... Now you had said yesterday that you took a, a walk from the Rockingham to the Ashford Gate with the dog. Were there any other cars parked uh, uh, on, on Rockingham or Ashford when you took that walk? Mm, not that I noticed. Okay. I'm sure Cato's car must have been there, but I didn't notice it. You didn't see it? Okay. No. What kind of car did he have then? I don't know. A 
maybe it was a Datsun or something like that. Okay. Um, Excuse me. Now, um, <clears throat> where was Mr. Park, by the way, when you first spotted Kaylin? I don't know. Was Somewhere it? around the limo. Okay, out of the car. Yes. Okay. Um, let the record reflect that we've made notations on, I guess, Exhibit 28, correct? Pardon me? This is Exhibit 28 on which we've made these uh, notations. Yes. Okay. So definitely not to scale. Okay. I don't represent that this is to scale. Mm -hmm. um, now, when, uh, when you first spotted Kalen and you guys were talking, mm -hmm. uh, did he then at some point in with you go into the kitchen? Later on, yes. <clears throat> when you say later on, was that after you went out to, as you testified yesterday, the Bronco? Correct. Okay. And when you went out to the Bronco um, to get, I think you said, the cell phone case and other, and the windbreaker, when, when you were doing that, where was Kaylin? Do you know? No, I didn't see him, but I, I assume he was. I can hear him at one point. Talk, he was talking to me as I went out. Did he go up with you? No. And, and I don't know if he was talking to Limbaugh. I just heard him talking as I went out, but I really wasn't focusing on what he was saying. And um, so he was behind me talking. And then when you came back... You uh, just described the witness made a circular motion with his finger just north of You're on videotape. Yeah, yeah, we're also making a written transcript of speaker. What do you want me to describe? I just want to make sure the record reflects what you're doing. Okay. When, when, you, uh, when you came back from uh, the Bronco and you, you testified yesterday, you dropped your items off at the front entryway and then went into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Did Kalen go with you? Yes. I think he went before me. He was in the house already? Yeah. We were talking when I came back. You were talking for a bit? Yeah, but we were moving. I was I couldn't stand in front of him like you and I are talking. I was doing what I was doing and he was talking to me as we were doing it. And at this point in here, I was talking about going this way and him going the other way and that's when I think that's the first time I heard about a flashlight was when I came back. From the Bronco. Yeah. And and I remember asking the limo I said ask the limo driver and, and I think he I'm said sorry, he, I said ask the limo driver. Yeah, I said does the limo driver have one? I believe, or words to that effect. Meaning a flashlight. Yes, and um, he says no, and he may have showed me this little pin flashlight he had, and I said, well, look in the uh, cupboard in the kitchen. Uh, there might be one, and that's when I went to my bag, and I think I had a quick conversation with Park about my golf bag, and at that point, uh, Cato was still talking, and I went into the kitchen. Okay. At no point during this whole encounter with Kalen outside the property did you ever sort of stand face to face, stop and talk, correct? Not really, no. no. You were moving around all the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now when you went into the kitchen, did you have a face to face No, he was, I think he was looking in the cupboard. And you were getting a drink of water, right? Yeah, I was talking to him. I went and got a water, came back and was just talking to him about look there and I didn't know where else to look for a flashlight. And you didn't give him the alarm code at that time, right? No, I think as we were, he was walking behind me as we went out and I think I was discussing the, the well look for a flashlight and the alarm is whatever and I said and he he was being Cato and um, and I said you know I think I said I'll call you or something but I know I said well look for the flashlight and I just went and got in the limo. When the alarm is activated and you're entering the property entering the door to the house mm -hmm. can you tell that the alarm is on? Yes. On all exterior doors? Not all exterior doors. Doors that there are, there are a pad on and stuff, yes. Okay. Um, was there a pad outside Arnell's door? No. Uh, now, if Arnell came home later that evening and the alarm had been set by Cato, would the alarm have gone off when she opened her door? Unless she disengaged it. Uh, no. No, it wouldn't have. And why is that? Because there's no alarm on her door. Uh, on the exterior door of her guest room, there is no alarm? Correct. Okay. Is that the only exterior room, not uh, plus Cato's, that's not subject to an alarm? No, and uh, the other room is not subject to alarm. So all the exterior rooms are not subject to alarm. Okay. Or were not uh, subject to alarm. The three exterior guest rooms, correct? Yes. Now, if uh, from uh, Arnell's room, when she enters her room, and she 
Can she go directly from her room to the inside of the home through an no. interior door? No. Okay, she has to, it's a freestanding room? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know what you mean by freestanding. Well, no. what I want to know is does she have another room that leads into the residence? Okay. Can He's you answered that? that. The answer is no. Her, the room that she was staying in at the time does not leave, lead into the residence. Okay. So if Arnell wanted to access the residence uh, and the alarm were on, would she at all times be aware of that? I would hope so, yes. And she'd have to look at the keypad and see that it was on, right? Yes. Is there a light? Yes. And she had the code? Yes. Um, okay. Now, when earlier uh, yesterday you had talked about uh, where the luggage was placed, and I just want to make sure I understand, on this entryway area there are benches on either side? Yes. Uh, uh, where I'm going to put these X's, there are benches, right? Yes. And you testified yesterday that you had laid the uh, golf clubs in the golf cover bag on w on one of the benches. Which bench? Originally the southern bench. I, which one is that? Mr. This Simpson? one. This uh, one over here? Yes. Okay. Uh, the southern bench. And then um, you came down. Now, did you move that to the northern bench at some point? No. Okay. And you also testified at some point when you were half-dressed, you came down and dropped the suit a mm -hmm. bag mm -hmm. on this golf bag, correct? I don't know if it was on it, but Near. in the same place, yeah. On also the south bench? No, because I took the golf bag off the bench at that time and threw it down on the ground. Oh. When you brought the suit bag down, you put this um, golf bag on the floor? Yes. And then put the suit bag on the south bench? No, I don't know. I may have just, I, when I, I may have put the suit bag down when I started going through the golf bag. Okay. The Bentley was. This is, we've gone through this whole thing yeah, yesterday, I'm, I'm and, and I'll pull it up, and because this is getting ridiculous to sit here, and when we're going to have our argument on Friday about ending the depot, um, um, we're going to pull this all back up for the judge when we go back and talk to him. The Bentley was uh, facing Rockingham. Yes. Okay. And yesterday you testified about leaving um, the uh, the white golf ball bag and another bluish bag. And did you leave that behind the Bentley or in front of the Bentley? Behind the Bentley. Okay. Yesterday you testified about uh, chipping the golf balls. And yes. I wanted to know whether using either one of these you could point um, to the area where you were um, doing the golf ball. Hitting. Right about in here. Yeah, the lower part. Yeah. I'll put an X with a circle on it, right mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, this, you talked about a big tree. Was that the tree right here? Really? Yeah. This tree near Ashford, right? I'll put a T there. And the golf balls you were hitting over the tree where the tree where the T is on. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. <clears throat> Did you tell uh, Cato Kalin to call the police? No. Or West Tech? No. Did you give? Did you say anything to him about the talking to Arnell? Mm, uh, no. Or no, was in the home. When she got home, I meant. No. Okay. Did you take what K Cato's concerns seriously? Not really. Why not? Because I didn't. He's already answered that. Because he was Cato, right? No, no because you answered, you're in. Don't, don't. You answered it once, and that's, that's did, enough. Did uh, K when Kaylin told you that he'd heard these noises, did he say at what time he heard them? No. Did he tell you whether he just heard them or heard them earlier in the day? I assumed it had relatively just happened. Just an assumption on my part. Based on the way he was explaining it to you? Based on that he had mentioned it to me earlier in the day. That he had not mentioned had it? Had not mentioned it to me earlier in the day. Okay. Uh, but as best as you can recall, he didn't tell you when it happened? No. Um, if, since you didn't take his concern seriously, why did you give him access to your house when you were leaving? Because he seemed concerned, you know, because I wanted him to find a flashlight and look around, if that's what he wanted to do. And when you called him from the airport to give him the security code, did you discuss with him um, whether he had investigated his, the situation? I may have. I may have said, did you find a flashlight? I believe he said no. Did you ask him if he had looked for people on the property or had investigated the sounds and noises that had concerned him? 
I may have said, is everything all right? And I, I'm assuming he said yes. I don't, I don't recall specifically. And then he, I said, did you set the alarm? And he said yes. That was that. Wasn't it in this call that you had given him the code? Mm, yes. So when you said, did you set the alarm, how was he supposed to have set the alarm? Well, I asked him to have, set the alarm. Excuse me, if he didn't have the code. Well, I was then telling him to set the alarm. So he said he would set the alarm. So you didn't say, did you set the alarm? No. You asked him to set the to alarm. To set the alarm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I don't want you to assume anything, so I just want to make sure I understand your testimony. Do you recall asking him what had happened with his concern about someone, about hearing noises? I do recall asking him, was everything okay? And tell me what he said to the best of your recollection. Uh, well, you don't want me to assume, so no, I don't can't. assume anything. So I can't. You don't recall? I don't recall, but... Okay. No. <clears throat> At any time before you got on that airplane, did you consolidate any of your luggage? Yes. When did you do that? When we got to the airport. Did you do that uh, at the... Uh, where the uh, limo driver pulled up to get the sky cap? Yes. What did you consolidate into what? I put my balls uh, in my uh, golf bag, and I took balls, and I think I took the windbreaker and put it in my golf bag. Well, let, let, me, let me back up a bit. You had this bluish bag, right? You cool. had the windbreaker in the new Max Fly 100s. Yes. You took that bag and put it in what? The he, golf didn't, bag. he didn't testify that they were new Max Fly 100s. He testified they were not scuffed. There is a difference. Okay. <laughs> Isn't there? <laughs> okay. I wouldn't know that. Look difference. at you. Are they Bilotti? Of course they're Bilotti. I wouldn't know that difference. Anyway, um, tell me, did you take that bag with the, um, the Max Fly 100s and the windbreaker and put it into another bag? Yes. What bag did you put it into? My golf bag. Uh, opened up the golf cover bag and put it in? Yes. Didn't put it into the golf bag itself, correct? I may have put the balls in the golf bag. I may have put it in the golf bag. I'm not sure about that. Took, you took the balls out, you think? I think so. And then and you left that other bag, the bluish bag, in the golf yep. cover bag? Yes. Not the golf bag itself, correct? Correct. And did you take the windbreaker out? I'm not sure. Now you already had another windbreaker, correct? No, I had a jacket. I had a jacket. I call it a windbreaker, which you saw, but it was a wet coat. But it's yeah, it's different type though. That's the one you got from the Bronco, right? Yes. And were you carrying that? I believe so. If I hadn't put it in my suit bag, I had it. I was carrying it, one or the other. Okay. So where did you do this sir, consolidation of the luggage, and while the the luggage was in the trunk? You know, I had taken it out of the trunk, and while I was standing out of the trunk, and some guys were asking me for an autograph standing there, and I was doing it while they were standing there talking to me. Uh, out of the trunk on the on the, on ground. the ground, yes. Okay. And did you uh, did you do any other luggage consolidation? Mm, no. What bags did you check with the sky cap? And what did you carry on to the plane? Uh, the Louis Vuitton bag and the um, uh, golf clubs I checked, and I carried my suit bag and my grip. And how much did you tip the sky cap? He said he only had ten dollars change, so he ended up with a ten dollar tip. You gave him a twenty? Yes. He gave you ten back. But he promised me he'd get my clubs on the car. On the plane? On the plane, yeah. When you left that limo, um, what, you paid park too? No, I told him to put twenty percent on the bill. And you signed it? No. I don't think so. You know, I normally don't. Did you use a credit card? No. You just billed you, right? I believe so, yes. And when when you um, left the limo area, did what did you do then? Went to the plane. Went directly in the doors and up to the gate? Yeah. 
Did you stop at any um, trash containers or no. receptacles? No. Not at all? No, no, no. Did you stop to throw anything away? No. Did you stop to rest any luggage on there in order to rearrange yourself or anything like that? That's a possibility. When you say that's a possibility, give me your best recollection of whether you did that or not. If you have a recollection. I don't have a recollection. I just know that it wouldn't be unusual to stand by the ticket counter, put my bag on something, because I know he had people in front of him that he was dealing with, and I was beside him, and I might have put my bag either down on or something to get my tickets out for him to give me my uh, baggage claim. This is outside, you mean? Yes. Where the baggage uh, guy works behind that counter? Yes. So you think you stopped there and rested your Well, luggage? I know I stopped there, and I know I went into my bag to get my uh, ticket for him to you know, do what he had to do. So I know that took place there. So if there was a garbage there, I could have been around the garbage there. Do you, do you remember putting a bag on the garbage? No. Okay. Did you talk to anybody besides the sky cap and the limo driver? Everybody who spoke to me, I talked to them. Who spoke to you? People. Can you name them? <laughs> no. How many? I don't know. You mean just fans? Yes. About how many? I have no idea. Well, you spoke to Mr. Park and you spoke to the sky cap, correct? Yes. You don't remember the sky cap's name? No. Okay. And then how many fans approached you? Mm, I don't know. More than 10? Probably, yes. He during gave the course of, you mean during the course of getting from there to the plane? Yeah, from that point until you got on the airplane. That spoke to me? Yeah. I don't know, I don't know. Whoever I went by spoke to me. Did you stop to speak to anybody? Other than, I didn't, I can't say I stopped to speak to the two guys who were there. I might have, but it wasn't like the Skycap was trying to check my luggage, so I didn't feel as if I was stopping for them. They just happened to be there. Two Skycaps? No, two guys. Oh, two guys. Did you give an autograph? Yes. To both of those guys? I don't recall. One or two autographs? I don't recall. Uh, did you give any other autographs? I believe so, but I, you know, I just believe so, yes. And where did you give those other autographs? I believe at the plane or at the counter of the plane, but I'm not sure. And you made one phone call? Yes. Did you make any others? No. <coughs> did you use coins to make the call or did you charge it to a, a number? I don't recall. You have a calling credit card, right? Yes. You use it regularly? I believe so, yes. Bills it to your home phone? I don't know. Or the OJ Enterprises office phone? I would imagine one of them. How long did the uh, limo ride take to the airport? Mm, I don't know, not long. Okay. Did you just made uh, casual conversation with Park? Yes. Okay. Did uh, you complain about anything? Yes. What did you complain about? Traveling. And just constant traveling? Yes. Uh, and complain about anything else? No. Complain, uh, complain about it being hot? I don't think so. Were you hot? Hot, no. Were you sweaty? I was wet, I know that. From? Jumping out of the shower, running downstairs, getting my thing together, getting in the plane, I mean, getting in the limo. Did you uh, lower the windows in the back seat? I always do. All the time? Yeah, I always, I don't like air conditioning, so normally I will turn it off if it's on, and most limo drivers have it on, and put the window down. Dale St. John does that for you? Yeah, sometimes, yes. We said you always do. Yes, but I don't need him to do that for me. I don't tell you to let the window down. I can let my own window down. But you tell him to shut the air conditioner off. Yeah. Sometimes if the summer is hot, he'll have it on when I get in, and I'll turn it off. Now, did you and Mr. Park uh, discuss Cato Kalin? Yes, I believe so. And tell us what was said. Something about was he nervous? He seemed serious. Words to that effect. Who said that? Park? I think Park said he seemed serious. Serious about what? Whatever he was talking about. Uh, investigating the property? Yeah. And um, is that, that, what did you say in response to that? That's when I, I don't know if I said anything, but I, I, that's when I think I decided to call and make sure he had the alarm. Was there a phone in the airport? I'm sorry, in the uh, limousine? Mm, I believe so. And you had your cell phone in your grip in the back seat? Mm, yes. Did you call from the car? I may have tried. 
What's your best recollection? I don't know, but I think I may have tried. I think something might have been wrong with the phone. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but I, I might have tried. On what phone? I don't know. If they had a phone there, I may have tried on their phone. Did you try on your cell phone? No, but I would have if, once I got to the plane. You, you would have, meaning what? If I didn't have time to, if they didn't tell me I had time to call on the regular phone, I'd have sat on the plane and called. No, I'm asking whether you used your cell phone in the limousine to make I that call. I don't believe so. Okay. I don't believe so, but I might have. I don't it know. was working, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, what number uh, would you have called? Um, his number. And, but, and how did you know that number? I would have had to dig my phone out of my bag, phone book out of my bag, which I, I might have done, um, and that would have been what I would have had to do. You have Kalen's number in there? I believe so. And that's what you use at the airport phone? I believe so. Okay. And any other discussion about Kalen? I don't believe so. Okay. When, he, when he said uh, he seemed uh, serious, what did you say? He might have been answering an inquiry of mine. What was your inquiry? What Cato's, how was Cato? What, did he seem serious to you? I might have asked that. I'm not sure. I just know that that was the gist of the I can't even call it a conversation. It was probably just a, a quick exchange between the two of us. And why do you think you asked him that question? Because I hadn't really given Cato much thought when I was leaving. And then as I was settling down finally in the car, I started thinking about it. <coughs> when, um, When you picked up the phone in your bedroom from Alan Parks, what did you say to him? Uh, actually, I started talking before he spoke. I said, yeah, yeah, I know I'm running late. I started talking before? Before he spoke. I just picked it up because I thought it was down. I said, yeah, yeah, I know I'm running late. I'll be right down. Did you say anything else? If he didn't call me right back, because I, I thought I might have hung up right then and then he called right back, and uh, because he had said something to me that rather tentatively I've been here and I said uh, I, I guess I said something about uh, yeah I know I've been in the shower but I'm coming right down and that was it can I see the previous answer You did not tell him uh, you had overslept, correct? Absolutely not. And you, in fact, had not been sleeping, correct? True. When was the last time uh, on June 12th you had slept? When you got up that morning? I may have dozed um, a little between, may have. I was reading and watching, I think, basketball or whatever was on. And I may have dozed somewhat before I went to the, to the recital. Okay. Well, we'll get to that later. When you were walking the dog uh, after 10 o'clock p.m. Uh, down Rockingham and up Ashford, did you see anybody? Well, first, that's not correct. I wasn't walking the dog down Rockingham and off Ashford. That's not correct. My dog went out when I went out to the Bronco, went and did her do, and I walked her around to the other gate. You walked the dog from the uh, Rockingham gate uh, to the Ashford gate? I right? walked to the Ashford gate, called my dog to come in okay. at the Ashford gate. Did you see anyone during that time? No, but I heard someone. Did anyone see you? I don't know. Did you talk to anyone? No. What did you hear? I heard the doors in my neighbor's yard over here. The, when they're moving around, sometimes you can hear them if they're outside, going inside or outside. And what neighbors are you referring to? The Schlesingers. Schlesingers? Yes. Salingers? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Salingers. Salingers. Yes. And um, do they live um, 
just north of your property on Rockingham? No. Where do they live relatively? Just to south of my south. property. Do I have my directions wrong? You do. Yes. Okay, so. Um, West. Here, it's on here. See, south. That way. Okay. South is where the uh, Rockingham gate is. Okay. <coughs> you heard some sounds in the uh, Salinger property? Yes. They seem normal sounds to you? Yes. Just people going in and out of the house? Yes. Did you see anyone there? No. Did you see cars driving by? At any time when you were out on that, uh, to when you went to the Bronco and then walked to Ashford and got your dog and went in? I don't recall, no. Now, uh, you've heard the testimony of Mr. Park about seeing a person in dark clothing in the vicinity of the front entryway and driveway area going yeah. into the uh, front door, correct? Correct. And um, you uh, told uh, Larry King that that was you, correct? I told Larry King that I walked out from my house and I assumed that if if he saw someone at that point in time, it was me because judging by his testimony, right when I got back at the top of the stairs, the phone rang. And his testimony, I guess, sort of said that. So that would have been me, yes. That would have been you when you came down the stairs uh, half-dressed the first time to put down the um, suit bag, correct? Uh, yeah, and to look, actually, I didn't come down to put down the suit bag. I came down to see if I had black shoes in my golf bag. And um, you came downstairs and you opened that golf bag and looked in for your shoes, right? That's correct. And, all of, and that's when you put the golf bag on the floor from the south bench. I actually held it up thinking that Dale was in the car looking at me and threw it down <coughs> for it was sort of me signaling to Dale to come get the golf bag. But Dale was, uh, you thought, yeah. you, by the way, you didn't know that uh, it was Park, right? No. You thought that it was Dale? Dale being Dale St. John, you're right. Yeah, Dale driver. are one of his guys who normally drive me. Who else normally drives you? You have to ask Dale. I don't you recall the guy's names, names no. Okay. Anyway, um, you signaled to Dale from um, the um, your front entry area? I picked the golf clubs up and held them up and then threw them down, thinking whoever was there, because it's an unobstructed view, would see me, <laughs> and threw it down on the ground. And if it was Dale or the other guy, I thought they would push the gate, come in, and get the, um, get the bag. Uh, Dale knows how to push that gate open? I would assume so. I know he has a tall guy that works for him that, that would have known, because I'm sure he's done it before, because they're all concerned about not letting my dog get out. Uh, who's that tall guy? I, as I told you, I don't know. You'd have to ask him. But he's driven me off then. Dale um, has come to your property um, and basically let himself in that uh, Ashford gate. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that many times Dale has come to my property. I'm normally getting dressed. I'm normally not the guy that's letting him in. Left the limo outside of the property because of the dogs and walked onto the property, got my Sorry, luggage. No. Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. After letting him in, left of the... Have, have come to pick me up without driving on my property. Come in into my property, take my luggage outside of the gate and put it in the car. I'm uh, saying that that has happened often. And when that happens often, who lets Dale in the gate or his I driver? I would assume Michelle or Gigi or whoever was downstairs at the time. Okay, my question to you is, uh, did you tell Dale or this tall driver mm -hmm. how to get into the Ashford gate no. if no one lets them in? No, I've never told them personally, no. And you, you testified yesterday that you know a way in which you can push the door manually open, yes. correct? Yes. yes. Did you ever describe that to the drivers? No. Okay. And did you ever see them let themselves in without being buzzed in? I've seen them on my property when I'm down, go out that gate with that gate going back and forth on a hinge, yes. 
And do you know how they got in? Well, normally my housekeeper was, okay. was down there okay. dealing with it. On this occasion, you know on the evening of June 12, there wasn't a housekeeper, correct? Correct. And when you signaled to, to the driver with your golf bag, is that mm -hmm. what you're now saying? What, what do you mean, mean by now, now saying? No, no, no. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That you signaled to the driver with your golf bag? Start all over again, please. Okay. You said you came down to the golf bag mm -hmm. with your suit uh, bag, put the suit bag down someplace. Correct. Looked in the golf bag Correct. for your shoes. Correct. Black shoes. Yes. Actually picked the bag up and walked out into the driveway area? No, never I never said that. You said you held the bag up. Yeah, picked it off of the bench. I guess they can see me. You want Correct. to describe it as I'm doing it. Picked it up off the bench, held it up and threw it down on the, on the ground. Held it up and looked over towards the limousine. Yeah, held it up towards yeah. that, because it was, I guess, parking light shining in, and the limo was right there looking at me, and threw it down. Limo was on the other side of the gate. Yes, but there was no, it was unobstructed. There was nothing on the gate to keep them from looking straight down the whole driveway, for that matter. Okay. And um, you did that, which you just described, in order to signal to him to Put the, come get the golf bag, right? Yeah. And how did you expect him to come into the property to get the golf bag? Well, I thought he would push the gate. If he didn't push the gate, it would have been simple. I would have said push the gate when I came back down. But he had no never pushed, thing. you had never told him about pushing the gate. I had never told Cato how to open a door, but I assume he knows how to open a door. Why would you assume that the limousine driver would know how to get into a gate that would appear to be closed and locked? Because he had been coming to my house for years. And everyone else who's come to my house for years knows that. Knows that you can get into that gate by just pushing it? Yes. Okay. But you never told the drivers that? I never told Cato that, but I'm sure if you asked him, he'll tell you that's how he came into that gate. I've never explained it to him. Okay. I've never explained it to Gigi, mm -hmm. but I'm sure she does it. And what were you wearing when you did that? Wearing what? When? What were you wearing when you motioned to the limousine driver with your golf club from that entryway? It's a golf bag. Golf bag. I golf don't bag. pants, I don't shoes, I don't a robe. What color was the robe? I don't know, but it's still in my house now. And no shirt? And no shirt. What kind of robe was it? Cloth robe. White terry cloth? No. What color? I said my house is a darker robe, but it's at my house. A black robe? I don't think so. Blue? Possibly. And there was a tide? Mm, I doubt it. The robe was never taken by the police? Neither were the bath towels, neither were the clothes that I were wearing. Which clothes? You mean the clothes the you clothes took off? The clothes that they asked me about, yes. The, the golf pants you took off, right? Yes. And the shirt? Yes. <clears throat> So uh, is, it, is it your recollection, what's wrong? Did you actually come out on to the driveway? No. You're positive of that? Yes. Can you um, indicate, Mr. Simpson, um, by pointing to Exhibit 28, where you were standing or as far out to near the driveway that you came? Okay, just wait while you're back down there. Do you understand the question? Okay. You can wait till Mr. Baker returns. <laughs> 